Welcome back to another exciting episode of LA Fish Guys. Note that this is now in high definition. Those are the polyps from the sea nettles, the Pacific, Northwest Pacific sea nettle. And as you last saw, they were beginning to strobilate. None of those polyps are on the tank any longer. Let's see if we zoom in here with the new camera. I don't think it'll focus on them. But there are no hanging ephyra on the tank. All of those ephyra are over here. Looks like there's about three dozen of them. Now I don't know if I can hold the camera still enough to focus in on these. These are about two weeks old. I think they were born on December 4th and it's now December 26th. And as I mentioned, these three dozen two-week-old ephyra are the first of their kind produced outside of a public aquarium. We built this system over a year ago and introduced a handful of loose polyps into the system then. We've been waiting over the course of the last year for the polyps to produce ephyra. Polyps are a branching structure and the ephyra are the results of the disc end or the branching end of that polyp segmenting or dividing itself into many flat discs. These discs will begin to pulse and eventually will detach from the polyp, thus becoming a free swimming ephyra. The ephyra look like a small snowflake. This particular species, the northeastern Pacific sea nettle, looks similar as a ephyra would for a moon jellyfish, but over a course of time, they'll begin to develop the trademark long tentacles on the outer rim of the bell. These ephyra that are about two weeks old are the first of their kind to be raised in an aquarium hobby environment. They'll be offered through the Midwater Systems or Jelly Aquarium website to Jelly Aquarium customers. Be aware that these are the type of jellyfish that can involve a sting, so we'll have to make sure that we have the armpit long gloves to wear to protect ourselves. Now there is one thing I did want to point out that I thought was kind of interesting and this is something that you should take note of. Uh, this particular tank over here is where all of the polyps were originally introduced. Some kind of stuff has grown there across the bottom. Wouldn't surprise me if it's some hydrozoan or um, I think someone also hinted at what's referred to as bougainvillea or something very similar. but. Those are the jellyfish polyps there, and this is in a tank up here. And then there's a, another polyp tank here with covers on it, it's not being used. And then the single ephyra tank here, and then there's three ephyra tanks down here, as well as a large reservoir, a uh, water pump, filter system, and then a grow out tank. The point I'm trying to make is, and I'm not sure how well we can see this here, but um, there are polyps in this tank. I didn't put them there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them, but there's some out of focus little white dots there. Those are polyps. You can kind of see them there. Polyps from this other tank. How did they get over here? And those two polyps obviously pass through the entire system, which means if they're in this tank here, they could potentially be in, say, this tank down here. So I wanted to also show something else. In addition to those two polyps there, and this may be even more difficult, there's actually 
two ephyra in this tank here. I'm not sure if you can see them at all in there. But they obviously came off of the polyps over on this side. And so I'll have to go in here and retrieve those two ephyra. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make is those of you that want to have jellyfish tanks need to be aware that part of the maintenance in addition to cleaning algae and debris that settles at the bottom of the tank is going to try to stop the intrusion of jellyfish reproducing and the polyps entering all over the entire aquarium. Uh, at some point you may actually have to break down bleach or sterilize the whole system just to eliminate uh, all of the uh, excess polyps that may develop throughout the system. And, and by the way, those polyps in a tank where the display jellies are um, is not a good thing because polyps sting uh, just as strong as the parents. And if the parents are constantly getting stung by their offspring, they're not going to do well at all. Um, so that's something you need to be, be prepared for uh, as you launch yourself into this aspect of the hobby. Uh, it's kind of ironic. I remember back in the, the early 80s, uh, when coral reefs first started and people would say these, these staghorn type corals uh, once they get growing they grow like weeds well 25 years later now uh, people are growing staghorn corals like weeds uh, and here we're at the cusp or the frontier of the jellyfish portion of the hobby and I'm telling you that once you get involved in this whether on a, a propagation basis uh, or just a display basis, you're going to end up being involved on the reproduction end of it as well. Uh, so be prepared, in, at least in some way, whether to, to, to rid yourself of it or to uh, collect and culture those and get into producing them yourself. Um, again, jellyfish, like the staghorn corals, in the right conditions, reproduce and grow like weeds. This being the large tumbler or reservoir that sits below all the tanks, decided to take a bit of a peek in here and see what we could see. I mean, I've, other than it holding water, it's not been used for anything. And lo and behold, polyps, jellyfish polyps, Pacific, Northeast, Northwest Pacific sea nettle polyps. And they appear to be all over the place. You can see one there with his tentacles streaming out. And there's a cluster right here. I don't know if those will focus or not. Yeah. And I did see where on the back side more polyps there so again be prepared if you're going to get into jellyfish once they get comfortable you're you're definitely going to end up in the reproduction end of it or at least the um, <laughs> killing off the reproduction end of it. So in addition to the reproduction and maintenance end of it, there's also the food end of it. So be sure to come on back for part three as we talk a little bit about alternative foods for the sea nettles. Interesting enough, they actually eat moon jellyfish.